right, everybody. Welcome back to Ma Pop Sports. This is Grandy. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, thank you for checking out the channel. Thank you for checking out this video. If you guys are returning, welcome back. Appreciate you guys coming back. Uh, hopefully, everybody's having a great week. Uh, just a heads up, this is going to be a long video. I haven't done one of these in quite some time. It's a little bit of a QA. and a And, you know, I tell everybody, if, if like I said, if this is your first time here, feel free. Comment any questions. Uh, feel free to, I you know, direct me, uh, DM me, direct me, D direct message me on Instagram, whatever the case, links in the uh, description. Feel free to follow me on Instagram if you guys have questions. Uh, I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. There was a ton of questions. Uh, if I miss your questions, I apologize. Like I said, I haven't done this in like two or three weeks. Uh, I've been out, if you guys have not known, uh, so I haven't had a chance to kind of get through. So I try to get as many questions as I can as possible. So hopefully there you guys go. So well, let's jump into it really quick and uh, we'll get started here, guys. Uh, so Comp C, why I don't use them? Will I ever use them? Um, so the main reason why Comp C is, uh, I understand there's, you know, their they're selling fees is cheaper. They don't really charge you your fees until you withdraw your money. I understand that. Uh, however, there is a storage fee. Remember, I think each car is like one cent or something like that. Uh, so storage fees do add up. If you don't move them, you don't sell them. So that's the biggest difference between Comp C and eBay, I feel like, because uh, I can list anything on eBay forever and ever and ever. And if it never sells, I mean, it is what it is, but they don't charge me versus comp c charges you because they it's a storage fee so i have currently almost fifty thousand listings on ebay so just imagine if i had that on my comp c uh fifty thousand cents per month if they don't move um it adds up guys so there you guys go that's why i don't use comp c and then on top of that ebay is the biggest platform that has the most amount of eyes uh so currently that's why i use ebay the mostly primarily um i do like i said it's just hard to, to maintain inventory if you have ComC, eBay, uh, McCarty, uh, Facebook Marketplace, Instagram, you know, and then doing card shows. The inventory, just to manage it, it's really difficult. Uh, so I try to minimize it. I try to diversify myself from previous video, obviously, but I try to try to minimize it so I don't have uh, too much inventory trying to keep track as a one person band here. So uh, TCG. So this person is doing uh, training cards uh, for gaming or, or just like Pokemon, things like that, or Dungeons and Dragons cards, things like that. Um, they're looking to get into sports cards, how to start. They're looking to expand. Um, I recommend that. I mean, I recommend diversifying yourself. Uh, I, I probably should go into that realm, the TCG world, but I haven't quite yet. Um, however, if you're looking to get started, uh, I think they were mentioning they're looking to, you know, buy low end to low end uh, PSA 10 grade. Uh, and they're looking to just to get, you know, uh, a lot of the, I guess you can say superstars in sports. So, I mean, that's definitely a way to get started if you want to go low end. Um, I honestly would recommend, because this is what I wish I kind of started, was maybe start in the mid to low mids, I guess you can say. So when I say that, anything worth about $3 to about $20, I think anything that's 0 to $1 or 0 to $3 um, is really difficult because there's just such a vast amount of those types of cards out there so it's gonna be hard if you're looking to break into that the sports world uh so i'd recommend like i said just trying to get into the lower mid if you can uh and then yeah start with the stars that doesn't hurt i mean if, if you like patrick mahomes patrick mahomes sells really 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 well if you're looking for football uh if you're looking for basketball steph curry uh, or you're looking like LeBron, they always sell very, very, very well. So if you want to go with the stars, I highly recommend that if you're looking to get into the sports world. Um, doesn't hurt. Diversify your, your inventory if you're looking to expand, for sure. I I'd recommend that. Uh, what's a good inventory? 50, 100, uh, 60. Have I ever sold a car for a $1,000 profit? So if this is your first time here, uh, if you don't know, I don't go super high end. So I've ever sold a car for a thousand dollar profit. I don't think I have. Uh, I think one specific car, maybe on a profitability wise, I may have sold for maybe about five, 500 ish or so. I don't do super high end. So if you don't know, um, go ahead. You can check out my other videos. I don't go super high end because number one, it's a big gamble. It's a big risk. Um, I'm trying to do this for a living. I don't buy those super high end. Uh, I'd rather buy a lot that's worth uh, $5,000 if I can get that lot for maybe, you know, $3,000, $4,000, whatever the lot is versus buying one car for $5,000 or $4,000 and then hoping it goes up. It's just too big of a risk as I'm trying to do this as a living uh, and then try to put food on the table, you know, and I got the kids and everything. So to, to have all my eggs in one basket and one car, I don't do that. So I've never really sold one for a $1,000 profit, but 
I have purchased cards, a nice card, you know, graded it and then increased the value. So I've done that quite a bit. And that's that's where my, I guess you can say my niche is right now, that and just um, buying those lots and then just reselling them um, at a good price once I get a good price on that lot. So that's kind of where I go. In regards to how much inventory you need, it all is relative to what you can handle. So people are always asking me, how much inventory do you have? So my listing on my eBay store has 50,000 listings. Um, am I able to ship that on a daily basis? Whatever, how many orders I get? Yes, I am. So that's where I'm at right now. I would like to have more. Um, I'm looking to hopefully double that within the next uh, year or two. Um, it, it, you know, I, I'm this is the thing. So I haven't really talked about this, but I'm transitioning to I'm going to keep my current uh, my pop card store on eBay. And then I'm looking to actually do a separate store. It's going to be just called my pop sports. Uh, it's going to be everything from. I'm gonna just, I have a lot of, whether it's sports uh, gear, sport use, sports equipment, uh, any type of sports memorabilia, whether it's autograph stuff, uh, whether it's jerseys, whether it's just anything I have. So I'm just gonna kinda have a, just a Mopop sports one. And that's gonna be a, a, a little bit different from sports cards. I may have some sports cards on that too. I don't know, I'm still looking into that. Um, but it's kinda kinda the branch off. It's still gonna be dealing with sports, but just kinda giving me a different avenue. So. I have one store that's dedicated to nothing but sports card, another store that's dedicated nothing to sports, use sports equipment, sports memorabilia, things like that, um, just to be fun and have a little bit extra stuff. And that's what I'm looking to do because um, that kind of leads to, to the other question here that somebody was asking, variation listing. Jesus, I couldn't even think right now. So variation listings to save, um, you know, free listing store. <coughs> I can. But I'd have to go back and redo everything. Uh, and I have 50,000 listings on the store, so to go back and redo everything is a pain in the ass. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but I'm looking to kind of just branch off a little bit more into just other items, whether, like I said, sports sports equipment, used sports equipment, or just sports memorabilia, things like that versus just cards only. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I'm just trying to diversify myself in my inventory, I guess you can say in that sense. So that's what I'm looking to do. and. Do I use a spreadsheet? Yes, I do. Uh, I think I did a video maybe several months ago. I do use a spreadsheet and in regards to the P&Ls, you know, how much I spend in my inventory, how much I sell on a weekly, a monthly, quarterly basis, yearly basis. I do have a spreadsheet I do run. I think I did a video on that before, so uh, you'll have to go back and check it. But I try to keep everything as simple as possible, guys. Whatever I spend this week, and whatever I sell this week, I don't break it down per card. I, I just break it down per lot or how much I spend and how much I sell. So if I let's just say if I spend on inventory this week uh, $1,000 and let's just say my revenue sales was $2,000. I'm in the black by 1000 bucks, guys. Simple as that. I don't break it down per card because if you do, you will go insane. So I just spend 1000 and I sell $2,000. i am happy. I got $1,000 profit. That's how I break it down. That's how I do it. Keep, all simp keep it as simple as possible. I don't break it down per card. You can do it however you want to do it. But if I break it down per card, um, it's just too much. It'd be a big of a hassle. I just go what goes out, what comes in, and that's how it works. Subtract the two, and it's hopefully it's black versus red. Keep it simple. Uh, table I show, how is it? Is it good and bad? Uh, somebody was look, you know, contemplating to, to do a show, in-person show, and you know, get a table. So this is my recommendation I have a lot of tips videos about doing in-person shows uh, for my experience remember so uh, I highly recommend it that make sure you have enough inventory for the show if it's a one-day show you don't need that much inventory uh, just make sure you have enough inventory to last you the day if you have a two-day show a three-day show a whole weekend show uh, you're gonna have to amp up the inventory make sure you have enough uh, of stuff don't bring any PCs I highly recommend that because if you bring your PCs you're gonna end up wanting to sell it because you see something else I, I highly recommend leaving any PCs at home uh, if you're looking to get a table budget that in usually right now uh, weekend tables if you're looking for uh, a one-day show it's anywhere you're, you're probably gonna spend anywhere from 35 40 bucks to about 150 bucks just depending on the show depending on your location where you you know how much you're gonna spend on a weekend if it's a three-day two-day show I mean you're looking to spend a budget I would budget maybe about three, four hundred bucks into just the table itself. That does not including your travel expenses, all that stuff. So keep that in mind. 
I would start, if you're looking to do a show for the very first time or you're looking to get a table, do something local so you don't have to worry about travel expenses, uh, food. If you want to bring snacks, I highly recommend bringing snacks. Save on food if you can bring from home, uh, drinks and all that stuff so you try to save a little bit of money on that end. But the shows I highly recommend, like I said, find out your location, find out what is moving really well, if it's just local teams. Um, if you're in a, depending on where your location is, I would get uh, your inventory based it on, you know, whatever sports teams are local, whether it's college, uh, professional sports, I would try to tailor your inventory to that. And then on top of that, all the star athletes, obviously, and what's hot during the season, football season, baseball, basketball, whatever season that I'd recommend that. So there you guys go. I would highly recommend you going to a show first, talk to dealers. They'll talk to you, man. The, the, most of them will, will be pretty nice if you have questions on that, but uh, definitely it's fun. Uh, be ready. Wear comfortable shoes. I, I did videos on this to, to give you guys tips on that if you're looking to do a show. So uh, that's how I recommend. I love it. I, you know, be ready to talk all day long. So I hope you, you can do that too. Introverts may struggle. FYI on that. Uh, do I charge for the shipping? Yes, I do. Do I bake it into the pricing? No, I don't. Some people bake it into the pricing, which um, it benefits them because they don't have to worry about charging shipping. It's free shipping, right? Simple as that. They bake into the pricing of the card. It just depends uh, on the person. And the reason, my thing is, the reason why I don't bake it into uh, the pricing is because whatever I charge for shipping, it covers all my materials, everything right. And then I can always adjust the pricing of the card to go up and down. Uh, it just depends how people search because they usually go for the lowest price possible, inclusion. It just depends. I feel like I do better uh, when I separate the two just to make sure I cover all my you know shipping expenses so that's how i do it there's no right there's no wrong way i you figure it out for yourself um i don't bake it in some people do and it works for them so whatever works for you guys uh do i just sell ultra modern cards only in my store or do i sell like old vintage uh michael jordan cards to mid 90s 80s whatever so this is the thing when i buy card lots i get everything from ultra modern to some vintage stuff so whatever i get i list so i don't specifically do just ultra modern only or vintage only i do whatever is in that lot that i purchase um and i'm hope if it's something that people are wanting if it's an old vintage stuff then there you guys go or if it's ultra modern there you guys go so there's no uh spe specific niche that i i purchase it's just depending on the lot of the inventory that i purchase um whatever it has in there and that's that's how i do that in regards to that so i do have some michael jordan stuff obviously i'm a big michael jordan fan so uh from back in the day so there you guys go i do have his stuff if you're ever looking for that so check out the ebay store on that uh charges oh excuse me ebay dashing boards where do i get the stats uh, for that if you just go to, I think I did actually a video on that too if you go to the eBay store if you have an eBay store uh, There's a location of sold items, right? You can you can technically actually export it into an Excel format uh, There is where you can just export the report, right? You can do any sales from all of last year quarterly weekly and I usually do it on a weekly basis if I did the videos like that before so export that into an Excel sheet if you want to see what's selling for that month or that week or that quarter you can do that super simple uh, and that's why I kind of like you know obviously I like eBay's that you're able to track to see what's selling what's not selling um, especially if you're into it over a year or two now so you can see previous years what's what moves really well during specific seasons and that's what I use it for so um, I usually do it on a weekly quarter basis monthly basis just to see all right this month of let's just say july and august football sold really 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 well um for previous years so maybe it will help you adjust your inventory for the you know the upcoming year uh for the upcoming season that's how i use it so you can like i said go to ebay just kind of go and playing with it you can export those uh reports and that's what i recommend you guys doing on that uh type of scanner i use i told this uh Multiple times, this is a Fujitsu FI8170. Uh, That's the current scanner I use. Did a video on that before, how I like it. It works for me. Uh, some people love it, some people don't. Like I said, find the right scanner that works for you. Uh, I wouldn't go super cheap. I did before, and I think I mentioned that before, it left uh, lines on the cards, and it also damaged some of the cards, so that's why I didn't. Don't go cheap on a scanner, guys. I mean, it's, if, if especially if you're scanning, 
thousands and thousands of cards you're gonna want a, a good scanner and you're gonna have to invest a little bit of money to make sure you have the quality um, equipment I just recommend that I mean especially if you're looking to do this full-time if you're looking to just do it as a side hustle whatever I mean if you want to get a cheap scanner whatever works man I'm telling you guys just try out whatever scanners and see what works for you and then I'm not gonna tell you how much you should or shouldn't spend on on those scanners um, how do I price cards that are like in the 50 cents to the $20 range if you have thousands of cards hundreds of cards um, how do I go about pricing each individual I kind of talked about this before as you get used to this you'll know a specific card that's worth two dollars you know a specific card that's worth one dollar you know a specific card that's worth five dollars I mean you kind of figure it out and you kind of estimate that's how I do it honest to God anything that's under like five to ten dollars i usually i can ask from from experience of collecting for almost 30 40 years and then just kind of knowing what these specific cards are going for uh specific answers i know it's for two to three bucks S specific rookie cards i know it's going for a dollar or two dollars or whatever you just know you press it at that and move on that's how i do it i use the app uh currently i'll talk about it in a second but i use chrono cards i use the app price it move on man it's one of those things where if you if you if you're doing those super low ends or low mids um spending time to to kind of comp a two three four five dollar card you're spending way more time comping that one card versus if you just put two dollars on it move on if you sell it great if not put it on sale in a couple months or a couple weeks maybe you'll sell it then or if you sell it instantly maybe you price it a little bit low but if you bought it in a lot like i do I don't care. I just I'm looking to move and, and, and just ship out the inventory. So that's what I'm looking to do. So that's how I price it. Once through experience, you'll know two, three, four, five dollar cards. I wouldn't comp anything that's I mean, I wouldn't spend time to comp anything that's probably not ten dollars or more. Um, because it's just you you're you're wasting too much time worrying about a dollar, two dollar profit at best. Um, or even fifty cents profit. Okay. So through experience, you'll be able to price it, you'll figure that out. Uh, how do I price non-sports card? I don't really have anything that's non-sports, so I couldn't really tell you on that. But, I mean, eBay sold is always the good good route to go. Uh, I think everybody honestly uses comps from eBay sold, whether it's non-sports items, whether it's just equipment, whether it's anything, um, you know, electronics, things like that. People just use the, the, the currently sold on the eBay and just kind of pricing it from there. I think that's what people do. Um, I guess that's how I would do it too for now. I don't know about non-sports stuff, so. And then, <clears throat> let me see. Cheap label printer recommendations. So I have the, uh, uh, was it the Dymo 4XL um, on that one? So it prints the, the thermal label printer. I wouldn't go cheap, guys. This is the thing about thermal labels printer. They are a little bit pricier than regular printers. Um, but it saves you a headache at the end when you're shipping multiple shipments on a daily basis. That thermal printer will number one, save you money on ink. Number two, it prints it super fast. Number three, uh, you get these sticker labels where you don't have to cut and tape it. You just take it, stick it on your package, ship it, okay? Don't go cheap on those thermal labels uh, printer because you're gonna use it It's on a daily basis. If you're making sales on a daily basis, and let's just say you're making multiple sales on a daily basis, that is one equipment that you use daily why would you want to go cheap on that that's how i see it as i didn't go cheap on my thermal printer when i first bought that i may upgrade it who knows i didn't go cheap on the scanner those are the items those are the equipment you use on a daily basis i don't recommend going cheap on that um i would do the research get the reviews and find out which printer best a lot of people use the rollo ones they don't have any issues with that you can use whatever whatever thermal printer you can um just like i said don't don't go super cheap don't go with the knockoffs i hate to say it um you'll run into issues you're running into issues where the label doesn't fit or it doesn't print and it'll piss you off guys so don't go cheap on that but at the end of the day it's equipment that you're investing into your business so i highly wouldn't go cheap on that that's just my thoughts on that so uh gamestop uh slab prices my thoughts uh why don't i do a video of prices on gamestop the reason why because there's like a billion videos on that go go to youtube search up gamestop uh sports card prices now why don't i use gamestop go sell to that because they are dirt cheap when it comes to comps you're not going to get your money's worth uh if you haven't seen if you take 10 cards in uh slabs psa 8 or higher or whatever i i would say 95 8% of the time, their comps are going to be so low what they're going to give you. 
um, you're better off holding and selling on eBay or holding and selling at a show. You're not gonna get, you're barely gonna get 50 to 70% of your prices. I Go look at the videos. I think a lot of people have done that. Uh, you might get one card out of 20 or 100 or 10 or whatever that they might give you something that's worth for you to sell to them. But at the end of the day, GameStop, they're a business too. They're gonna buy shit at super low cost, maybe 50% of comps, maybe even lower, maybe 60, 70, whatever the case may be. And then they're gonna obviously resell it and then they have to cover all their overhead fees. So they're gonna be really, really dirt cheap low. If you're just looking to move your shit and just get cash right away, obviously that's a route. Definitely that's a route. But like I just said, you're probably better off. If you're, if you're gonna go do that, I would just go on freaking Facebook group page. If you're looking to move, you know, 10, 20, 40 slabs or whatever and say, look, Bulk discount, guys. 60% at comps, and you're, I almost guarantee you'll set, you'll sell that instantly. Versus if you go to uh, GameStop and trying to negotiate with them, because they're just going to give you whatever you know they're told to. Those are just workers too, so they're just going off whatever the numbers of their you know the system for them to say they can pay allow. So I don't get mad at them. They're just going doing their job. Um, but like I just said, if you're looking just to get cash, if you're looking to cash out, you're better off going to Facebook Marketplace group page or wherever, going to a show, just like take all my whole inventory, 60, 70% off of comps, bam, you're you're most likely going to sell that way versus going to GameStop. And that's how I think of it. Uh, like I said, but GameStop is a business. It, it works for certain people. If you're looking just to go and like I said, instant cash as soon as possible, you just won't get as your bang for your buck. I guess that's the word. Uh, how to hand, how do I handle inventory to make picking easier? This is a great question. Um, I have never really done a video cause it, it's just hard to do a video of how I do this. So when you do an inventory, when I first started, uh, I was kind of honestly doing just sports and then alphabetical order. Horrible idea to do that. Cause that shit sucked when I had to do the picking to do it alphabetical order. Right guys. So you have to have a kind of like a skew or a number system so you can look and search it a little bit easier. So when I first started, people were like, you're an idiot. And yes, I was an idiot because once you scale up to a certain amount of listings or a certain amount, how big your store is, it's a bitch. It is a pain in the ass to go and find those specific cards to ship, right? Especially as you get bigger and bigger. So what I normally do is I have a number system that's broken down into uh, sports and into an alphabetical system. So people are asking me, how do I, you know, uh, uh, inventory things so it's easy for me to pick. So let's just say this. It's a, uh, if I'm listing cards, I would actually label it as, let's just say it's football, right? It's football. And then I would label it as A, right? Section A. And then I would put one, okay? That's how I would do it because it would be section A, one. Next card would be football, section A, two. And that's how I labeled it, labeled it. And then that's how you do it per each individual one and you list, 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 list. So you get up to, let's just say 10,000, right? I got up to 10,000, uh, all right, let's say the listing is the football is a 10,000, section A, I wanna start a new section. So I'll go section B. So section B, one on the next card, section B, Two. And that's how I kind of do it. And I label it as I list. So then I never have to go back and resort or relist anything. And then let's just say somebody buys that card. Let's say somebody buys a football card that is section A9050, right? I'm able to kind of go through everything that I already listed pre when I was listing. I already, you know, obviously labeled this card. So I go in there, find, I go to football section. I go to my section A. I go to the 9000 section. And I, that's how I pick it. I don't know if that works for you guys. I, I don't know. It's working for me currently. Um, but that's how I do it. And that's how I label it. Uh, I use, a, you know, just a regular labeler for each individual card. And that's how I label it, guys. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, people use specific SKU systems, whatever it's, whatever system works for you is how you do it. But that's how I do it. Hopefully that helps you. It simplifies that a little bit. Don't go alphabetical order. Uh, and then, it's a pain in the ass, trust me, guys. I, I try that because then you look for each, you may go alphabetical order, but what if that person or that athlete has 100 cards? Then you're gonna go through that 100 card, it's a pain in the ass. So that's why these number, numeric system, alphabetical system kind of works for me and that's how I do it so currently. So hopefully that helps you guys on that end. Uh, card dealer pro thoughts and apps and versus Chrono cards. So that's the last questions. Why do I like Chrono cards? So I'm glad we got to this part. I'm not sponsored by anyone, so I don't give a shit. 
I currently use Corona cards. They're pissing me off currently right now, guys. I yesterday and today, uh, I hey Corona cards. If you guys want to, if somebody can help you out, I've been waiting for their your guys's uh, uh, what do you call it? Customer service, customer support team to help me out. My link system to my eBay store, I can't list anything the last day and a half, so which has sucked. So Corona cards, help me out, fix that issue. Uh, something's wrong with my connector, uh, but. The reason why I, you know, usually they're really, really good, so I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. It's been less than 24 hours, uh, so I'm waiting for them to get back to me. But the reason why I use Corona Cards is because the software is more of an Excel Sheets uh, format. I prefer that. My previous job, I was a contract manager uh, for a healthcare system, and we use a lot of Excel program software system. So it was, it was more convenient for me because I know all that information and it's easier Excel and it's quicker for me. Car Dealer Pro is more visual, more user friendly. I heard, I, 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 I use it one time, I just didn't like the interface of it. So that's why I don't use Car Dealer Pro. Uh, but if Colonel Car doesn't fix me within the next couple hours here, I may go over to Car Dealer Pro. I don't know, but I'm just letting you guys know on that. Use both, I think both has a chance where you can um, trial period for both. So, Honestly, yes, I highly recommend it. If you have hundreds and thousands of cards to list and scan and list, if you have a scanner and list, I highly recommend using those apps. It is worth the investment if you're looking to scale up and, and you know resell your cards. Uh, if you're looking only to do 10 cards a week or you know a card a day or whatever, no, it's not worth it then, obviously. Uh, but if you have a, a mass amount of inventory and you're looking to get it listed as soon as possible yes i do recommend that um but like i said trial period for either one figure it out uh right now i'm like i said i'm a little perturbed hopefully uh chrono cars can help me out fix this issue that i have but we'll, we'll see on that uh but like i said a lot of people love car dealer pro um i don't know maybe i'll go back to them uh, and give them another shot we will see uh but other than that there you guys go Sorry, video super long. Hopefully you guys were able to kind of pause or whatever and come back to this. But uh, if it helps you out on this, great. If not, hey, you guys watch this far, you crazy, man. You guys must have a lot of time listening to me talk a bunch of nonsense. But don't forget, check out the eBay store. I'm doing a big sale this coming week. Uh, I'm doing a three for one special. I'm doing a 60% off of old clearance uh, of cards. You can get cards for super dirt cheap. So check out the eBay store, links in the description. Uh, next week, October, I believe, 5th and 6th, uh, or next week, whatever next Saturday and Sunday is, I'll be at the Colorado show uh, up there in North Glen. So stop by Northern Colorado, if uh, Northern Denver area. Uh, if you're in the area, I will be there. So make sure you guys stop by. I did have somebody also, one last question uh, about Deion Sanders, uh, because I'm in the area. Am I interested? Somebody mentioned. Um, I am, not a huge lot. I like to diversify my lots. I don't just buy one specific player. So uh, just kind of give you a heads up. But if you are in the area, stop by. I'll take a look at whatever you have. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring your thousand of Deion Sanders lot. If that's what you're wondering on that. So, but other than that, I will be at the show. So make sure you guys stop by. I think I have two tables. So I'll have some, uh, some slabs, some wax. I got some stuff. I'm just looking to move. So I'll be there. Uh, should be fun. Can't wait to, to do the show. It's been a while, a couple months. So I'm um, pretty excited about that. Other than that, man, have a good rest of the week. Have a good weekend. I uh, apologize. This was a long video, but hey, I haven't done it in a couple, couple weeks. So I figured I, I, I'd give you guys a good Q&A and um, we'll see how that goes. So other than that, man, Bears, please do not suck this weekend. Hawkeyes are on idle till next week. So uh, at least college football, I won't have that much of a heartbreak. Uh, but we'll see next week when they play Ohio State. But other than that, man, have a good weekend, guys. Till next time. Mm -hmm.